Five years ago, my friends and I got together to look for land. And it was three years ago when we found a perfect place. Perhaps not ironically, it was an old plant nursery. 19 months ago, we decided to renovate the old 600 square foot seasonal nursery office into a home. And since that time, we've been hard at work turning it into something special. We're simultaneously doing a whole before and after tour of the home on our sister channel at Flock Finger Lakes, if that interests you. But for this tour, we'll concentrate on the plants. All right, well, welcome to the Meadow House. This is long overdue, and we have a whole tour of the Meadow House on our sister channel at Flock Finger Lakes. But what I want to take you through today is a little houseplant home tour. got into this house in the space, it's only about 600 square feet, I thought, mm, I could probably fit about 50 or 60 plants in here. And I think we have a little bit closer to around 90 plants, <laughs> but it just feels just right. I don't want to overdo it here. Uh, I want to have plenty of space for folks to move around in. And this is a house for myself to sleep in and to work in and to shoot in but also when guests come to flock, we could actually put them here. So my mom was just here, uh, she stayed here. We had some of our friends come in from the Netherlands, they stayed here. So it's things like that, that we just wanna have um, a space for people to enjoy and not to be overburdened by any one thing, including plants. <laughs> so I'll just take you through some of the plants that we have. Some of them you may actually recognize because a lot of them are actually from my place in Brooklyn. In fact, probably the majority of them are from my place in Brooklyn. Although I did acquire some new ones here and there that I think like fit well with the space. But we'll start over in this corner and you'll see that we have these really generous sills. These are actually uh, sills that were retrieved from like a 150 year old barn that was um, probably about 50 miles from the area. And some of the old terracotta, basically I just recycled some of that terracotta that I had in my home and I had so many planters to choose from but really wanted to keep a bit more of a muted color palette here. So the, the distinction of like picking the plant and the right pot for the right place, I think is uh, something that I really took to heart here. With my home in Brooklyn, I basically had lots of eclectic things, lots of colors, and anything kind of just went with it, the textures. But here, we just went with like much more natural textures, like clays and linens. And so we wanted to really bring that through also with the planter pots. So here you see like I have this Sansevieria and it has these beautiful colorations of that kind of dark green and that greenish blue. And then some of my aloes, so this is a south facing window might I add. So that's why I have a lot of my succulents in here. <laughs> and the little Colin Coey actually is coming up in here as well. This one just kind of seeded itself everywhere, put its little propagules everywhere. And then I have this funky mermaid's tail, which I had showed you. So I love some of those cristate or monstrous versions of plants as well. And so I thought that looked really nice. This is a plant that was relatively new-ish. I got within probably the last year and a half. And this I got at an auction at Terrain. And the person who was auctioning this off, they don't actually know if it's part Clarinervium, Magnificum, like what the hybrid is but it's actually very sturdy. And as you know, with a lot of the hybrids, they actually are easier than some of the species to have within the home. And this has been a pretty sturdy plant. And I actually had repotted this in a different plant pot, but wanted that pot outside. And so I actually repotted it again. So I did a whole episode on that, but um, repotted, ended up repotting it in a whole new planter pot. The Dracaena in the back. So I wanted something that was a little bit more stately for the corner. And then continuing on with some of the aloes and the cacti over here. So this is one of the ones that I had repotted. This one is amazing because it's changed color depending on the, the window that I put it in. So now it's in this like Western facing window. 
And then you can see this one's having a little, little offset right here, and it's starting to go from its mustache state and turning around. And so I have a whole video on how the aloes actually shape, shift over the years. And then here's like this little tephro cactus, and it has like those little paper-like spines, and you can see it's growing off a little propagule on one side, and I absolutely love this. I didn't even have to change this one out of the pot that I had it in um, in Brooklyn, so I just had that nice neutral tone. And you can see I have some more over here, so continuing some of my aloes. And then you can see this snake plant, which I would gotten quite a long time ago, and it's actually variegated, but the variegation is not that strong on it. But you could see that the leaves are very fierce. Lots of spines, so I didn't want to put too many spines behind where somebody's sitting. <laughs> so if you lean back too far on this couch, you got to watch out. Um, and then this one was a plant that was sent to me erroneously. And um, of course, I didn't want to throw the plant away, but it's like a nice uh, Haworthia right here, a little hybrid type. And then you can see that I have another snake plant here, one of the bat versions, and it has a bit more of a bluish green hue. So those were just some of the plants that I had back here. And just like little plants that are kind of abound and around. So we have some of our philodendrons right here that are just taking up a bit more of the space. This is a Tenanthi that I picked up at Home Depot or Lowe's and then found this beautiful bucket at auction, one of those old time buckets that used, uh, were used to take uh, chicken feed or like water. And then this sill, I really wanted to take advantage of this sill because you have light coming in from the west and light coming from the east and you still wanted to have some privacy between the kitchen and the living room. And the perfect way to do that is by growing some plants. And you can see I have this Hoya Comingiana, which is just kind of going every single direction. It's really taking advantage of the light from all angles. And then I have another Hoya, Multiflora right here. So this is the Shooting Stars Hoya. And actually this was just in bloom, which was cool to see. And then I have my Epipremnum kind of growing up the wall. And I actually use this, this is different and unique. This was like a Gorilla Glue kind of clay. And I used that in order to be able to put this up here. This one maybe got a little too heavy and fell down, but it's kind of the color of the clay. And instead of using some of those uh, plastic affixers, which don't really work well on this clay wall and actually end up taking a lot of paint off your wall, I found, this is much more gentle and really wraps around the plant. So I really liked that. And I'll, I'll put a uh, link to where I got that because I thought that was really neat. So you can see a lot of new growth coming off of this Hoya. This one's going to bed. This is my Dioscoria, and it was like really nice and green, but as the winter comes, it starts to um, kind of just die back to the, the caudex and the roots. And then in the spring and summertime, it'll start to green up again. Here's another Hoya. I really liked this one for the fact that it has this bullet texture to the leaves, and I wanted to put it into a brass planter that that has that hand hammered look. And I felt like the leaf had that look too. Then you might rec recognize this one. This is one of my really old plants. It doesn't have as much new growth on, I think from changing it from one place in Brooklyn to another, may have uh, took a toll on it, but it's still doing really well. But this is my Pachira Aquatica and it's the variegated version. And so this was the planter pot that I've always had it in. And um, I just, you know, absconded it from Brooklyn and put it here. And then this is a, a new orchid that I got, Dendrochylian wenzelii red. And I really liked the look of this. The flowers were really understated and it looked like red wheat. So that one had flowered and I love the grassy kind of look of it. Over here, I have, uh, it's flanked by two snake plants, two different snake plants. So they have the traditional Trifasciata over here. And then I have this one, which was in my bathroom Sansevieria erythrea, and it has this more cylindrical shape. And you know what I found out about these is that you think that these would be in really, really bright light, but oftentimes they have nurse plants above them, 
and they're in somewhat shade, partial shade when they're out in their environments. So this one was in my north facing window in Brooklyn and seemed to be doing just fine. And so I didn't wanna put this in any kind of harsh light. So it does get a little bit of Western light towards the tail end of the day, but otherwise it's in the interior of the space. So I figured I can mimic that a bit more. All right, so the kitchen, um, I'm taking advantage of some of the height here. The only problem is like, I don't often water the plants when they're a little bit up high, but we have a nice little um, th step stool that you could walk on and basically like take and step up on. So that's really easy for me then to, to water them. But you can see that I have some Hoyas up here and I have this one, which actually was just in flower. So you could see the peduncle right here. I, I pretty much every single Hoya flowered in here. So I don't know if it was like that time or the movement or whatever. You could see that this one had just in, in bloom. This is, this is a Hoya Memoria. So all these little flowers are coming off, which I could probably compost. So that smelled very beautiful. And then this one I just picked up. If you recall, if somebody had seen that, I went to the Cactus and Succulent Show and I got a little Plectranthus, the Vix plant, and I put it in my little kippy planter. So that kippy planter had been without a plant for a while and I had packed it in. A little composter back here. And then what else do we have here? Okay, two more aloes and I really liked this blue shade of the aloe here. So this is an aloe that's a hybrid of Cinquetana and I had been having, the, uh, this was been growing in my place in Brooklyn for quite some time. And it has this like really blue hue, but then in the light, it gets this kind of purplish red color. And so, I, and I found these planters at Tula House and I just really liked them for the color. I thought that would really work well with the Meadow House because you could see we have like a bit more of the sagey tone and this green tone and some of these neutrals. And so I wanted to plant two of my bluer aloes actually in that. So you could see kind of what they look like from that perspective that in here. And then here's a zero cisios perire. And this one I always have to be careful of because this is a little cup with no drainage. So, uh, but it seems to be doing very well in here and I'm always just mindful when I actually water something without drainage. I just water to the point that maybe doesn't go all the way down to the bottom of the base. And then here's my little Hoya that was growing in my kitchen and kind of growing back, it didn't have a window seat. So this one now has a window seat. So I'm sure that this one will probably end up growing a little bit better. I'll give you a closer look of the kippy planter. Actually, it was uh, broken a little bit. So I had Sonder glue it. <laughs> I was like, chipped it. All right, we'll move to these windows. You can see I have plants in just about every window. So we have some aloes and uh, snake plants and gasteria, Hoya polynura over there. So quite a lot of things. And then over here, you'll notice that I, I brought <laughs> finally, you know, trying to get these on buses and things like that is always really difficult, but Sandra had been driving into town. And so we ended up uh, picking up some of these larger plants and I really wanted this uh, zero cisios dinguia here. And I, it was growing so well in Brooklyn, but eventually you have to move everything. So this one, I th figured we'd put it here. It just barely fits. <laughs> so we have to, you know, kind of make amends to it. South facing too. South facing, yes. And then here is one of our Hortheopsises. This is the Glauca. And it, I didn't want to move it out of its planter. This is the original planter it was in, just because it seems to be growing well. And I just really love the way that it's snaking out of the planter. Here's some more Hortheas some of our aloes, and then this one, which is a Horthea. And then here's another snake plant that I think looks really sharp in its dark green container. And then Anthurium radicans slash luxurians. So this one became popular on the market and I have this in a gorgeous planter that was made by a local artisan, Gary Burkow. So, I've actually featured him in some of the newsletters and everything, just different artisan spotlights. Here's a beautiful orchid that was also in bloom. 
and it had it gets these little blooms like off the leaves. And uh, this one I actually picked up locally. There's a woman who actually grows orchids and just takes offsets and cuttings and things along those lines because she's overblown with orchids. So I thought I would uh, support her and then have one of her orchids in the house. And then here we go, we have some of my peperomias. This is Perescafolia. And it's kind of like tr a trailing plant. I had this in really nice direct light, so we'll actually see how this goes because this gets a little eastern light, but not as direct light as I had it before, which was like I had it in a southern window and also with a grow light over it. And I actually have no grow lights in this space, so we'll see. Up here, this plant I've had in Brooklyn. Uh, this is the philodendron callosum, and I really wanted it for this specific space right here. And I just loved how it was kind of toppling over. I love the texture and the shape of the leaf. Um, it's very meaty leaf for philodendron. So I really saw that here on this armoire and that's where I inevitably ended up putting it. Here's one of my beautiful anthuriums up here and my pubicalyx, my Hoya pubicalyx and my alocasia as well. So we'll see how those guys do because they don't get a tremendous amount of light. They get some Western light, but yeah, does the light reach in that high? Probably not, right? It, it does here. It gets in and you can see some of it come through, but it's like not direct. Okay, so it gets get indirect Western. Yes, yes. And then over here, all Western exposure. So I have my uh, euphorbia here as well. So um, didn't have to end up repotting this, but ha it had some crispy bits that I ended up taking out. It's getting cold, so now that it's getting cold, I have to also be mindful of which plants could actually be close to the window and which can't. So the, in the west and on the north side in particular, it gets fairly cold. This was in my south-facing window at my house though, and it seemed to be fine. That south-facing window seemed to be a little bit too much for it because it was getting a bit more yellow, and now you can see that this is actually greened up quite a bit but I ended up fertilizing it as well. So I think that helps. I think that this would be like kind of the last month of fertilizing and I would probably cut all the fertilizing by about half uh, because you're, you're kind of entering out of a growing season into a more cold season. So this is one of my other orchids. This is the Isoclades calcata. And uh, you may have recognized this because I had featured this in 365 Days of Plants. There's a number of plants here for my 365 Days of Plants series. And I figured this would also be very nice. Didn't even have to change the planter. This is the planter that it was in. Really liked that planter for this house, especially because we're going with a lot of clay. Here's another one of my Hoyas. And I actually um, have some of our little fossils that are in here as well. So just little dioramas, things that make it a little sense of discovery here. Now this orchid I recently have gotten uh, from my tour at the orchid exhibit at Longwood Gardens. And this is a Alice B. DuPont Waldorf. And this bloom, it's a Cattleya. This bloom was dynamic. It was white, so fragrant, so redolent. I think I have a video of it and I'll put it up on screen. It was absolutely stunning. And I think it really likes the pot that I put it in, has a lot of new growth, and I hope it'll actually flower next year as well. That was a joy to see. Here's another one of my aloes. I put this in a new pot. Love this planter pot. I actually got this from Geometry Gardens. Just just that raw clay color, which again reminded me of the clay that we have in this house. So I had this actually in the bathroom, um, but I don't think it really liked that north facing window. So I wanted to give it a bit more light here on the western side. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of light right now, but in that western light when it comes in that sun sets, it's actually quite nice. Here's some more plants over here. There's one plant that I'm really concerned of. I got this sent to me and it was during the winter months and it never really recouped. This is a Hoya Sunrise. So this is the plant that I think I'll probably end up replacing. It's just, it's not, it's not looking good and it never looked good since I got it. So I'll probably end up replacing this one out of all of these, which is sad to see. Tried to recoup it, but you know, just didn't have the opportunity to. Some of my ripsolises. This is the Ramba, and it has 
a lot of beautiful new growth on it. This one was in my kitchen space, I believe. And I just transferred this to one of these really beautiful terracotta pots. Again, that kind of has that clay like the walls here. Some new growth on this little snake plant. So you have some new growth right here. And then this aloe was in a little green and yellow pot in my kitchen window. And it's grown, or not aloe, this is a gasteria. This has grown so much and that I just had to repot it and give it a little bit more space because the pot that I had it in was so super tiny. And then this is like a nice little cutting of um, one of my scandapsuses. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it will really uh, enjoy climbing up this clay, but to be determined, to be determined. Oh, this is one of my walking irises. I failed to mention that. This was also in bloom, but their blooms only last for a day, but they're exquisite blooms. And so they kind of bloom down here on their like little stolons that they, they pop out. So it kind of reminds me of like one of those like spider plants, but is a little less pedestrian. Some plants down here that I didn't mention, another Haworthiopsis, kind of a traditional one you pick up at your supermarket, I've had that forever. And then one of the black ZZ plants and I just, Loved this basket and wanted to utilize it and figured it would be a great floor plant. Okay, final room of the house. It's a bathroom. And you can see back here, I have some of the Ripsolises that are up there. It gets a little bit of this northern and eastern light, but not too much, but that's okay. It doesn't require that much light because they're rainforest plants like growing epiphytically on trees underneath the forest canopy. Like you'd be amazed, like even in some of the, like for instance, in a cloud forest, you're only getting about 75% of that light because of all the mist. And then when you, by the time you get down to the forest floor, you're getting like 0.5% of light. So a lot of these plants become really adaptable and, and really amenable to like your home environment. Here's a Hoya uh, Carnosa crinkle. And I loved, again, I was actually thinking of putting this into one of those hand hammered brass planters because of the way that this looks, but it looked so perfect just kind of going down the side of the wash stand right here. Now you recall that this was one of the begonias that I got from Steve's Leaves and I was debating whether I should put this in the terrarium, but it's actually done extremely well right here. So I'm gonna leave that right here. This is one of the um, orchids that I had here, Lutisia discolor, and then some of the peperomias that we have. I also have one on the back of the toilet as well. And then we have some Ripsalis as right here, and then we have some Dyskidia. And one of the aloes that I picked up that actually used to look like, if you recall, used to look like one of the mustaches. I actually bought this and it looked like a little mustache I was holding up. I think I was even wearing this jacket. And now- That's this plant? That's this plant. Wow, cool yeah, the one that we got from the farmer's market. And it's now started to shape shift and get more of that kind of traditional aloe shape. Broad, 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 broad is the name of the species name. This was also in bloom and it had a nice little powder smell. So this one is one of those, I don't think they call it that um, anymore, but it used to be called like the Eskimo color way, but I don't know what it is now. And then this is a Pylosirius. It's got just that nice blue color. This is one of the ones that I would be a little bit skeptical because this is in a Northern window and it's probably better in a Southern window. So I'm gonna just see how it grows. Once it, if it doesn't get enough light, it starts to get a little bit too thin. So just have to be mindful of that. All right, and then this one, I don't quite know where this is gonna go yet, but this is my Hoya linearis. And right for right now, you're gonna be showering with the Hoya because I think it's doing extremely well here, but I just have to figure out if um, it stays here or if it goes elsewhere. And then this is my Dyskidia, which is also in my bathroom in Brooklyn. And this one, I think, just loves it here because it didn't get a window in my bathroom. It wasn't in a window in my bathroom. It was a little away from the window. And it's putting out all this new growth. And I think that's 
perfect. So let's see what else. I think that's about it. Oh, one thing I should mention is that I already showed this, but I made uh, like the little terrarium. So I have that growing in here, nice and humid. And I have a lot of like little things like dried plants and um, arrangements that I've done in the kitchen and just like in some of the areas that are a little darker. But yeah, I'm very pleased with how this turned out. I'm glad that I get to actually play a little bit outside too. So I have to take some of those outside plants in because it's getting a little chilly. And, uh, but the fact that I'm able to actually grow some of those plants three seasons out of the year outside or take some of my outdoor plants outside and give them a chance to actually grow outside or like if they get like mealy bugs or anything like that, I could take them outside, spray them with a hose, let some of the natural uh, ladybugs and lace wings and actually attack those, <laughs> attack those pesky insects. And uh, yeah, but I really love how this turned out. I still think that the house feels very airy and movable. And yet we have about a tenth of the plants that I had here in Brooklyn, but also half the space. All right, that's the houseplant home tour and you'll be seeing more of this place in future videos. We'll be covering plenty more plant tours and tips here on Plant One On Me. So if you find yourself enjoying what we produce, we love for you to join us by supporting the channel with a like, subscribe, and hitting that notifications button. And if you'd like to chip in more by tipping or becoming a sustaining member of the channel, then do consider that. Information on becoming a sustaining member and our suite of online houseplant courses can be found over at homesteadbrooklyn.com and houseplantmasterclass.com. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.